Hey everyone, it is Kathleen and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a wonderful magical day. Welcome if you're new, welcome back if you're not. So as you might notice, if you have watched my videos before, I am not in front of my normal backdrop. Um, that's because I am working on a special project on this bookshelf. Um, I figured it was time for a new magical bookshelf because my other one, it's not like full, but I don't want to overload it. So I'm losing my mind in quarantine, self-isolation, and I think it's time to do something constructive with the time I have. And I'm going to be transforming this bookshelf into a magical Harry Potter shelf. But before we get into this video, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and add a little more Lumos to your day. And leave me a comment down below and tell me what kind of projects you've been doing during this self-quarantine, self-isolation time in our existence. All right, so I am going to stop talking and let's get straight into the video. So I've had this shelf for quite some time ish years all over that and I've never really done much with it it's actually supposed to be a five shelf unit and I am missing one of the shelves but I think it looks fine like this um, yeah this is something that got left behind by all my mom's um, former tenants and obviously we like to, obviously they never came back for it so it's my shelf now <laughs> but I really like it but it doesn't really fit the vibe of my room you can see I have Dark wood, dark wood, dark wood, uh, bookshelf, and basically just a bunch of dark wood, Harry Potter stuff. Um, I'm going to do a Harry Potter room tour eventually, but this um, color just doesn't match my aesthetic, so I have a really awesome idea. So yeah, I have a really fun idea for this bookshelf that I saw on Pinterest. I'll put the picture around here. So as you can see uh, by the picture, it's a bookshelf that has Harry Potter pages pasted all over it in this really cool pattern and it's a, it's very magical. So I wanted to recreate that on my bookshelf, but when I saw this project, I was like, I'm going to have to rip one of my, I'm going to have to cut up one of my own Harry Potter books to get the pages. So. So long, old friend. You served a great purpose, but I think it's time to say goodbye. No, I am not using my Harry Potter books. I am not ripping up a book. I am not a monster. Um, I know people who have done projects with Harry Potter pages usually bought them secondhand from like a damaged bookseller and they were already damaged, but I just can't one financially do that and two it just seems wrong to me so I will not be cutting out pages and I'll show you what I'll be using instead so for this project what I am using is in case you want to follow along at home maybe not for a bookshelf but for a desk or for a uh, I don't know a desk any surface you're going to need Harry Potter pages. Like I said, I did not rip these out of the book because I'm not a monster. But as you can see, these look pretty like legit, like I took them out of a Harry Potter book. But you can tell there's something on the back, so proof that I didn't rip up a Harry Potter book. But basically what I did was I took this really nice paper. It's like 100% fine granite paper, um, kind of parchment looking paper. And I, um, was thinking I was gonna have to scan the Harry Potter pages myself that I wanted, but I was able to find some resources online um, of people that had already done really, really nice scans of Harry Potter books. So I did not do that. So I was able to flip through, save them as J JPEGs, JPGs, whatever. I was able to save them as photos and I was able to print them off. So I have so many here. Um, I don't know how many I need. Hopefully this is enough, I hope. I only have four shelves and I'm not gonna do the bottoms. So yeah, that should work. And the other two things you'll need, um, besides a surface to work on or to paste on, you're going to need some Mod Podge, the 
I mean, I have a satin finish, but whatever Mod Podge you can find is. And if you don't have Mod Podge, you can actually make your own with um, white glue, Elmer's glue, craft glue, whatever, and by diluting it with water. I believe it's a, a 2 1 ratio, so it's like two thirds um, Mod Podge and one third water. I could be wrong, Google it. And you're also going to need a brush you don't care about to paint on the back and of the paper with the Mod Podge. So a brush you don't really care about. This one's super old and I don't care about it. So that's what you're going to need for this project. And I put this together because I just wanted to see where it would fit in my room. But I'm going to have to deconstruct it. So, so here I am. I've deconstructed a shelf and now I am getting ready to work on it. Not sure if this is the best angle camera wise or whatever but I need want y'all be able to see it um, hmm maybe I'll get a better camera angle in a minute this angle is probably not attractive either but whatever so like I said I'm gonna take these Mod Podge and a brush that you don't care about because Please ignore my legs, they're so white and probably not shaved, so <laughs> we're getting very close to this video. Now you'll notice there are these holes on here. I think my plan of action is to paste on top, but then I'll be able then I'll poke through later. Yeah. So let's go. I only got one shelf finished last night because I was super tired. Sorry about just kind of creeping right here, but I don't feel like changing the angle. But this is the finished shelf upside down, I think. So this is the bottom shelf, and I'm about to get started on all the other shelves. We've had a casualty before I could even get started on the other shelves. My Gryffindor um, house point counter that I made broke. And by broke, I mean it fell off my dresser and broke on carpeting. So, yeah, that's how great this project has been going. <laughs> and now I'm sad because I don't think that uh, the craft stores carry these until Halloween. Great. Oh, I also found a, uh, I also found a sponge brush, which usually is better for applying Mod Podge. So I'm excited about that. all four of the shelves and as you can see or maybe not see probably not because it's so far away but I poked holes where the metal supports brackets go um, I figured I'd do that before I would uh, fin put the finish on here because then it'd be too a, a little bit harder to do it um, so long explanation that's not really that needed 
Now what I am using to seal it, I, you could use Mod Podge if you want to, um, I just don't have enough of it, but I want something a little clearer, not clear, something that's going to give it a little more of a thickness to it so that I know that the pages are protected. So what I'm using is polyurethane with a satin finish. I don't want it super glossy, but I don't want it super matte either. So satins seem so satin seem like the perfect option. Typically you want to do this outside or with an area with a lot of ventilation, but since it's uh, spring and I would have to leave this out overnight to dry, I don't trust that there's not going to be bugs that get stuck in it. So I'd rather do it in here where I know there's no bugs. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing a couple of layers of this. You need to give it a couple of hours between layers to dry. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to use a brand new um, brush or a foam brush to do this. So yeah, let's get polyurethane. And this is this is gonna be these fumes are very very intense. So if you are a, are a kid, I recommend you getting your parents to do this part. Um, I would recommend doing it by yourself. Hey everybody! So it is day three of this project. But I have all of the shelves have now all been sealed and dried. I did two layers of the polyurethane, satin finish, um, varnish, clear varnish, whatever you want to call it. So now I think it's time to assemble it. And yeah, I will show you it assembled now. so happy with how this shelf turned out I mean it looks way better than it did before and I think uh, before I finish this video I'm going to put all the stuff that I want to put on here and show you the finished product I say okay I would say finished product because I'm sure there'll be other Harry Potter merchandise that I will fill the shelf with but I'm gonna put what I have now so yeah stay tuned for that So that is all for this video. I am so thrilled with how it turned out and sometimes it might look a little bare in some places on the shelf that just leaves more room for more Harry Potter goodies and for more magical transformations in the future. I hope that you enjoyed this magical transformation of this boring bookcase I had. I wouldn't say it was boring, it just didn't meet my aesthetic and it was a little too muggle for me. So it went from muggle to magical. I just want to give a huge shout out to those of you who answered the questions that I had trouble with in my last video. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the video and for watching and commenting. And I'm not going to leave you hanging. I have another Potter Pop quiz.
for this video. So I, I uh, went through a lot of pages for this, not of my own book, like I said before. Um, I printed these off on a special paper. Um, but when you're gluing and uh, finishing stuff, you kind of read some of the pages. And I have a question from one of the pages that I saw. So on the Hogwarts Express, when Hermione is introducing herself to Harry Potter and he says that he's Harry Potter, what three books did Hermione tell Harry she read his name in that she had gotten extra when she was purchasing her textbooks? So what three books was Harry's name in that Hermione said on the Hogwarts Express? Comment your answer down below and maybe you'll get a shout out in the next video. So thank you so much for watching me and for always bringing Lumos to my life and let's continue to live Lumos every day. Bye.